Okay, welcome back all. This has been a very long awaited video for a lot of you. If you've seen my how to make uh, Wolf Hunter skins video uh, for the aircraft, you will know what this is about. But today, I'm going to show you how you can make tank camouflages because they are slightly more, they're slightly different to their aircraft counterparts, as in the tanks have alpha layers which work in a slightly different way to what the uh, aircraft do. So we're going to work on alpha layers today, uh, file structure, and just how to make tank skins. I'm not saying this is the best way to do it or the worst way to do it. This is the way that I do it and the way that I find easiest. There are ways where you can export the models and use things like Substance Painter or Blender to paint your models uh, in a 3D space. I do not have knowledge of 3D applications or 3D I have my knowledge in 2D space, so we're going to be working on the files in Photoshop, but you can use GIMP, or I think some people use Paint.net, I'm not sure. Any uh, software that can open DDS files, you will be fine using. Let's get straight into it, I'm going to show you how I make my skins, and see if it helps you guys. So the first thing that I always begin with is file structure. I will generate a skin in War Thunder with a little magic wand um, to make a file. Or, I will grab the BLK from someone online or a friend. So you're going to go into your user skins folder, and if you've generated a skin from the game, you will see the folder here. It will be like 10 plates and then the name of the vehicle. If you haven't generated a skin, what you're going to want to do is a new folder. You're going to call the folder what you want the name of the skin to be in game. So, for example, let's say British green tank maybe, I don't know. You can name us whatever you want, This the name of the folder will be what the name of the skin is in game. So say for example, we want to make the Char 25T, we want to turn the Char 25T into a green British tank. Don't know why, but maybe you want to do that. So we're going to grab our Char 25T BLK. How you get this is up to you. So we've got our BLK, that's what we need for the game. So we don't actually need any more files, this is all we need. So. What I like to do next is create folders, so I will create a PSD folder. That's where my Photoshop files are going to be saved, um, because when you upload your skin to Warframe the Live, no one needs the PSDs. The PSDs are the original files that you use to edit. So every time you open this, you can edit your skin from where you left off. And I also like to add a DDS folder. So, when we grab the textures from the game using the CDK, we're going to place them in our DDS folder. Yet again, these folders you can name whatever you want, um, it won't affect the skin. These are just for your reference. So, these two folders here, name whatever you want. So, the DDS is where the game original files are going to go. So, if we mess something up or we need to grab the original files, we can go in this folder and grab them. And then the PSD folder is where we're going to put our graphics editor application files. So Photoshop files or GIMP files. Okay, so we've established our file structure for the file. Now we're going to want to find the in-game textures so we can use them as base templates. Um, and so we know where things are on the vehicle. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the vehicle that we're using. Uh, some vehicles are named slightly different things in the files as to what they are in game and the char 25t is a perfect example of this if you don't know the name of your vehicle in the files you can look at the name of the blk the name of the blk will be the name of the files so as you can see here the char 25t is actually called the bat chat 25t in the files okay so now that we are in the asset viewer we're going to just type bat underscore chat and these are our char 25t uh, skin files now the only ones we are going to need are the C files, so underscore body underscore C, gun underscore C, and turret underscore C. So the C files are, you can't see them right here because I think my CDK is broken because it's right after the update. So when you come in here, you'll click on C and the 2D texture will come up on your screen here. The end files are kind of the PBR textures and then AO is ambient occlusion, but we don't we don't really need those. We don't need AO or N, really. The N is only really if you want to change how shiny something is. But for the normal skins on tank, you don't really need it. So we're just going to focus on the C files, and there's three of them. The turret, gun, and body. And all you're going to want to do is export to DDS, and then export to that DDS file that we made earlier. Here are our DDS files that we have imported from the CDK. And you'll notice that there is a camo file here, which I didn't mention. 
So if, you, if you're not sure which files you need, all you need to do is open your BLK and it will tell you here. So you just need to get all of these files from the CDK. So the camo vert olive, the body, the gun and the turret. And you just, if you just search for these right here in the CDK, you will find these files. So now that we've got all of these, we're going to start making the skin. So um, we're going to want to open them in Photoshop or GIMP, whatever you have to open DDS files. So I'm going to go ahead and open the body file in Photoshop. Okay, so we're here in Photoshop, and I just want to state this before we begin. This is I, this is not the best way to do it, or the worst way to do it. This is the way that I make skins, okay? So if I do something, so if you're a skin maker and you're watching this video um, and you think, why is he doing it this way or I don't do it that way, that's fine. We all have our own ways of doing things. This is the way I do it and it seems to work pretty well for me. Um, I have a few tank skins on the marketplace, so I guess that says that my method works. So what I usually do is I come to, I like to set things up first, which makes things easier later. So I come to my channels if you're on GIMP, I'm not too sure how you would do this. Um, I'll try and explain things so you can use the methods in both applications. But I'm not really sure how you use GIMP that much. So we're going to want to grab our alpha layer, which should look like this, black and white. So the white spots are the things that will show up, and the black spots are things that won't show up on the skin. And then grey is, you know, like an in-between. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make a folder. And I'm, I usually call this main, you can call this whatever you want. This is where I'm going to put everything in. So the, the camouflage, the decals, everything. This is the folder that everything will go in. I'm also going to make a mask for this layer. Now at the moment the mask is plain, that's fine. But I also make a, another layer right on the top. And I call this alpha original. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick our mask here and you'll see in our channels layer there'll be a mask so we're going to click on our alpha layer we're going to click ctrl a to select everything ctrl c to copy we're going to click our main mask and then we're going to click ctrl v to paste so you can now see in these in these layers there's a mask on both layers which also means if we go back to rgb then you can see that we have that alpha layer on our mask so I'm also going to just duplicate this by holding the alt key and dragging it up to alpha original and then I'm just going to lock this and hide it. So basically I, I use the alpha original layer for so for whatever reason if I need to change this alpha layer, edit it or I mess something up I always have this alpha original. So if I mess something up I can drag this original back down and have the original back there. It's just that it's always nice to have original somewhere separate so you don't so if you do mess something up you can go back to the original and start again or start halfway through. So that's what I like to do with the alpha. So in the main here uh, this is where you'll start making your camo so you can put whatever you want in here the decals the camo whatever. So I usually like to create a base layer so let's say because we called it um, British green didn't we so let's find a, a green color for our base camo. There we go. Not, I don't think it's really a British green, but it's green. <laughs> that's, that's what matters. So it's green. So that's our base color. And as you can see, it hasn't filled up the entire file. If I was to create a layer here and fill it, it would do that. Which would paint the entire tank green and make it look like a plastic toy. Because everything is green. Whereas this way, we are only painting the bits that are white on our layer. So it's basically, you know making the outlines of the vehicle for us now yes if you paint in 3d on substance painter or blender you could get this a lot more accurate but for me someone who doesn't know 3d this is like a really nice way to do it we've got our base color and now we're going to come on and paint the camo so we can choose a paintbrush that we like yeah again it can be anything this is your camo you can do as you wish on this so we're going to pick like a i don't know like a tan color to go with the green and then we can just start painting on our camo on our tank. So I don't know, you could do some squiggly things. You can do a basic camo like some tanks like this. I'm not sure. And you can you can see where each part is, the main parts anyway. So you know, this is the front plate of the tank. This ring is obviously where the turret would be. The turret's on a different file, so you don't have to worry about that right now. Now, 
Uh, I think I mentioned this in my aircraft uh, skinning tutorial. If you don't know what a part is or you cannot find a part, all you have to do is generate a new layer. Just call it, I don't know, test, because you're going to delete it later. You, want, you don't want to keep this. You're going to find a really bright color, like bright green or bright red, bright pink. And you're just going to place a dot right there. So then all you're going to want to do is save this and go to your War Thunder, refresh the skin and see where this red dot appears. And that will tell you which part that is of the tank. That's a, that's a, that's a nice way I like to use. And then you can just obviously delete that layer and get rid of that spot because it's not something you want there. Or it might be, that's up to you. We've done our skin, we've finished our skin or we want to preview it in the game. So to save this, we're going to want to, of course, first save the PSD. Uh, not PSB, that's something I was doing the other day. So d you can save PSBs if you want, but PSD is usually better for this for this purpose anyway. So we're going to go to our PSD folder where we save our Photoshop files. And we're just going to leave the name as it is. Yet again, you can change it to whatever you want, but it makes it a lot easier if you just leave the name as it is and it won't get confusing. I'm going to save that in our PSD folder. Done. And now we're also going to save it as DDS. Now, if you're on Photoshop, you will need the DDS plugin. GIMP, I'm not sure. I think that can just open DDS default. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. We're not going to save it into our DDS folder because this is where our original DDS files are. We don't want to overwrite these because if you do, then you'll have to go all the way back to the asset viewer to grab them again if you make a mistake. So we just leave this folder as it is. This is our originals. We don't touch them. So we're going to save the DDS into just the main folder here. And so that, that way the game can read them. So we're going to save this. And then you're going to want to use 888 ARGB. Your DDS application may not look the same as this, but it will have very similar settings. So you want to find the uh, triple uh, the quad 8 ARGB, which is this one here. Everything else you can leave the same, it's just that you need to change. I'm going to save this. And then as you can see, it saves it to our folder. So side note, the thing that I forgot to mention at the start is we're going to want to edit the BLK. You guys will probably have something that looks like this with .tga and the files don't have the underscores underneath them. So because we're working in DDS, all you're going to want to do is come up. So this is in notepad. Um, you're just going to want to replace all the TGAs with DDS. You can do that manually or in notepad. I like to go to replace, find TGA replace with DDS, replace all, it will replace all of them with DDS. Now the next thing we want to do is go to these uh, two lines and just add underscore C uh, like the top line. You can copy and paste it if you want to from the top line to the middle line. You want this middle line to be named uh, the name of your file in here. So if you name this DDS file file one, it has to say file one dot dds here so that's why i say just leave the files as they're as they are because then all you have to do is come in here and just add underscore c to these like that if you start changing file names it can get confusing and you have to change everything in here so just keep the file names as they are with the underscores and everything so once you change all the dds's and the underscore c's you're gonna go control save and that's the be okay done we shouldn't have to touch that anymore we have our dds here if I now go into War Thunder, okay, so we have our Char 25T here. This is the skin I made earlier. If we go here, we can see that we have British Green Tanak. I spelled it wrong, obviously. But it's Br British Green Tanak. So that's the name of the folder. That's what I was saying earlier. Whatever you name the folder is what it will say here on the list. So if we go British Green Tanak, you can see that we have the tan yellowish colors that we painted on here earlier. You can also change the condition if you wish. Now, you may be thinking, well, it's not its not as bright as it was on the file. It's kind of dirty and grimy. That's fine. There is a way you can fix that. So we're going to go back to our Photoshop here. And all we're going to want to do, or what I like to do, is just duplicate these folders. So you can see it's getting brighter. So I usually like to go with a maximum of four. Um, so if you do it three times, four times, it's much cleaner. So now if I save this as a DDS in our main folder, remember, we don't want to overwrite the old DDSs. 
Now if we come into the game and refresh, you can see it's a bit cleaner. So you can duplicate those to make it cleaner, um, or you could edit the alpha layer. Um, but I kind of like my tanks with this dirty look, it makes them look more used. Like here, look. So you can see it's quite clean, and because it's a tan colour, it does cover up most of it. So some colours work better than others. But yeah, you can see here it's quite nice, and you can change the condition. It does change it a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit, and it's nice. Once you have finished your skim, you've saved all the DDSs to the main folder, you've edited the BLK, you've checked it in game and you think, yes, I like this skin, I want to upload it to Warfinder Live. So your folder will look something like this when you finished without the zip, because this is this is uh, this is the desert skin I showed you just a minute ago. This is the final folder for it. So the zip you won't have yet, but we will make one. So you want to check you've got all your you've got all your DDSs, the camo and the turret body whatever. You've got your BLK, you've got your original PSDs in the PSD folder or GIMP whatever you use, and then you've got your originals untouched DDSs in here. So we're gonna choose all of these right here and we're going to put it into a zip um, you can't use raw it has to be a zip so I'll show you here add to archive I'm gonna choose a zip and I'm just gonna name it video test so I know which one to delete later okay that will compress that as you can see here we've got char 25t video test if we open this we have all the files that we need uh, some people are more fun that live prefer it if you add a folder to this instead of just all these files You know if you add a folder here uh, Let's name it char 25t and then we drag all of these Into here or you can copy and paste them and then we add this to the archive zip So when someone downloads it from Wolf on the live they can just drag this folder instead of making their own folder and dragging all the files into it. It makes it easier for them, but both work just fine. This one just makes it easier for the person downloading it. And then once you've packaged that, and as long as it's under, I think, 300 megabytes, you can upload it to Wolf on the Live and add some images, and your skin will be on Wolf on the Live. I hope this video helped. If there's any questions, please do feel free to leave it in the comments below or message me on Discord. My Discord will be in the description below if you need any help with this um, I'm always available to help you and I'm more than happy to help anyone who has issues with this so I hope this has helped you and I hope it has helped you understand how to make tank skins as they are a little bit different to aircraft but I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see all your wonderful skins I'll see you guys later Everybody